if we look at our day ask ourselves the question how many things we do that it's an end in itself just the value of the thing itself for itself we're running here to get there from there so we can achieve something else as I the proverbial running after the chasing after the bus is uh, I have expressed many times before running the bus getting on the bus getting to work work all of this is just a means to an end what kind of reward do we have in the thing itself that we do so our sages say the reward of the mitzvah is the mitzvah itself this is even a deeper idea unlike a laborer who works for money the engagement the experience what they're going through is a means for something for the money that they get the reward that they get is also not direct it's not that you work for the hour and you you know directly results in money no what do we do that is direct in what we, in what we perform well that's the reward of the mitzvah what is the reward of the mitzvah well it's the revelation the mitzvah is the will of god and in the act of doing the mitzvah we reveal an experience of godliness that the soul senses that's the fruit of the mitzvah itself right in other words there's a revelation of godliness that imbues us that embraces us that light of god that's emitted from the mitzvah and therefore as a result that there's this light that embraces us you can know the essential nature and the rank of the mitzvah by its reward in other words by its the experience that it gives us you can know meaning the light that it generates the mitzvah that is then that light that the soul experiences is rewarded with um you can know what you know what that mitzvah was in other words what type of mitzvah where were you in that mitzvah the kavana the intent in the mitzvah that you engaged in so with great uh righteous people that their level that they're a level of a chariot that they're completely um bound up to the divine and only a reflection of the di- divine that's already transcending our understanding and it's a lofty reward and experience but in the revealed matters that we can all somehow understand and aspire to so we can know the essential nature and the rank of the divine service of it by understanding how the person did the mitzvah so if the kavana the intent when the person did the mitzvah was something that they comprehended with their minds to such a degree that it developed through a meditative state shall we say a love and awe of god and that's what motivated you and that's what's engaged you engaged in the act of the mitzvah whether the act is the act of putting on fill in the act of prayer the act of uh, torah study you know the act of um the charitable whatever mitzvah so then we can know the experience that the soul will have and when we say experience it doesn't mean that you know well those who are on this level can experience yeah the experience that the soul will have meaning the fruit that it bears the light that it emits in the act of doing the mitzvah that we are um imbued with absorbed with that divine light so if the, mo- the the motivation in that mitzvah 
was one of understanding about the mitzvah, understanding about God and the and and God's engagement. And that led to a, a palpable feeling of love and awe in the heart, then such a mitzvah, its place will be in the world of Bria, the world of divine comprehension. As your comprehension, it will go to the world of comprehension, Bria, the highest of all the three spiritual worlds of creation, of creation. Being that your intelligence goes and, and motivates the individual but with your understanding that brings and develops a love and awe of God. So we'll go to that world that is of divine comprehension, the world of Bria. And that's where the, the, the light that will be emitted that the soul will then experience from that world. If the service is motivated by the natural love and awe of God that's hidden in one's mind. Now, there's not developed in the emotions of the person, but there's only a mental awareness uh, that we have an inborn love and awe of God. Then the reward will be that your mitzvah goes to the world of Yitzira, the world of formation, which is a lower world than the world of Bria. And the light that emits in the experience that the soul has as a result is from that rank, that place, the world of Yitzira, the ten divine, and, and when we speak there, it means the ten spheres, the ten divine attributes that are divine. That's the light that it produces, such a mitzvah, that then the soul has such an experience. But if the divine service is without arousing even mindfully, right, that you know that I have a soul and that soul has a hidden love and awe of God, and by thinking about what I'm engaging in, I'm doing it with that capacity in the mental awareness of that, which then again, it goes and gives us an experience of a light that that produces. The fruit that it bears that mental capacity is again of the world of Yitzhira, the ten divine attributes there, the emits a light that we have, the soul has that experience. But if you're doing it without any of that, even in the revealed mind, uh, and minimally in the revealed mind, without the natural love, but instead that love and all remains in its native state, hidden in the heart, as it was before you did the mitzvah. In other words, um, it, it's not motivated. It remains, it's not motivated by the, again, the love and awe of God. So such a service of God, meaning the mitzvah that you do in such an instance, remains in the world of separation, meaning the external world. So it doesn't touch the divine above. It touches the spiritual worlds above, but the externality of it, as opposed to the internal aspect of it, which is the divine attributes of those worlds. It doesn't have the power, that mitzvah, that's not motivated that doesn't have, again, a mindfulness. It's not, doesn't have the power to rise, to be absorbed in God's unity, meaning the ten holy divine attributes in the world of Yitzhira or in the world of Bria. And that's what the Zohar says, that without awe and love of God, it doesn't fly upwards. It can't rise to stand before God, meaning in the godliness it remains external. Now, that doesn't mean that there isn't a value in the mitzvah. Of course there is. Because in the moment of doing the mitzvah, you're still absorbed in the, in the divine. But to experience the light of God, 
that won't be there because there isn't a light that you're experiencing doing the mitzvah with intent as we've explained previously in this chapter 39 that we're in is the the act of the mitzvah is a vessel is a container and then what fills it the kavana the intent is the light that fills the vessel or like a body that has a soul that fills it and gives it vitality so there isn't a vitality so it's if it doesn't have the intent so it doesn't fly up to stand before god meaning before divinity because it doesn't have the vitality it's the light that gives it the vitality just we see in our lives right when you're animated about something you're very you know you're alive and sometimes you're just like dead to the world and you just got no strength no power missing the vitality what's that the light the light of the soul 